Go uh, hey, uh, this is Gene here at uh, Knobcon 2024 uh, with our company Entropy and Sons showing off our video synthesizer. So the big news is that after a lengthy five-year development cycle, the video synth is actually out and it's now shipping and we have sock. Uh, normally ship within 24 to 48 hours. Um, so I would imagine a lot of people watching this video probably at least have a little bit of an idea of who we are and what we've been working on. Uh, but yeah, uh, to give you an overview, this is our synth right here. Uh, it's a standalone generative art platform. And the major thing to know is that it just makes really cool visuals. It's a little bit different than most video synths. Uh, but the major selling point is just the quality of the content it makes. Uh, it outputs 1080p and has, is running some algorithms based on software that I've been working on personally for about 20 years. Uh, so I've just been adding like kind of artistic content and quality to it for a very long time and uh, I'm really happy with just how it looks. Um, so uh, another one of the major selling points of the synth is just the major degree of interoperability it has. Uh, so on the back it has eight zero to 10 volt CV jacks and you can wire those CV controls to any of the internal numerical parameters. So it's kind of based around a semi-modular architecture uh, where video processing and other kind of processing modules are all kind of wired together in networks. And uh, on board the synth, there are about 270 some processing modules and over 100 numerical parameters. So there's a wide uh, control space and uh, parameter space that you can interface all of the external I.O. parameters with. So like I mentioned, we have CV input, uh, we have MIDI input, both over USB and 5 pin. Uh, we have video inputs, mostly through USB, uh, and uh, we also do audio analysis, and we do some really sophisticated things with the audio. Uh, we actually do a bunch of frequency analysis and give you a bunch of derived advanced waveforms. We can do beat detection, we can do tempo detection, and you can synchronize like the tempo of an audio stream with uh, external or internal LFOs. Um, so on top of this, uh, the instrument is uh, the synth is what we call an instrument platform. It actually houses multiple visual instruments. For instance, we have this kind of feedback recursion simulation right here, which just makes this kind of content. Uh, but we've also been working on a bunch of other stuff. So this is new as of about two weeks ago. We have a 3D oscilloscope on here, which does this kind of stuff. And it's all like interactable and dynamic and controllable. We have an actual 2D oscilloscope. Uh, it's a wave, or it's an old, wait, wrong one. It's a CRT simulation. So this is reading directly from the uh, CV Jackson is actually rendering like a decay phosphor based CRT simulation. We have like a wave interference simulator, which is actually hooked up to the CV LFOs right now. So it's being kind of weird. Uh, and we have uh, this other instrument, which is a tutorial, which is some weird thing with cats, which I'm actually in the middle of kind of rewriting. So another thing to know uh, is that the synth has Wi-Fi and it's really easy to update it. So I've been working on the hardware for about five years, the software about 20 years, and I am scheduled for full-time development on the synth for another at least year or two. So uh, all the oscilloscopes that I just showed you are actually new after the release. So we have more instruments and more content and more modules kind of uh, in the pipeline. So it's not just uh, locked into what we uh, are shipping with. It's actually going to continue to grow and we're trying to make a guitar visualizer. I'm working on a video mixer, a video effect unit. Because even out of the box right now, it actually does some really cool video effects. And if you wire it up correctly internally, you can actually cr already create a video mixer. So this is actually right now using the external video source. Let me toggle that to the camera. No, I was actually backwards. So now it should be using, oh, the camera's pointed up right here. See, this is actually just kind of acting as like a video effect processor at the moment and looks kind of awesome. Uh, but yeah, that's the general idea. Uh, so on the UI, you have like a, little, a preset selector. It comes with about a thousand presets. You have like a performance view and then you have a create view, which is actually where you can go in and build stuff from scratch. So it's not just a like preset machine. You really have like a very wide degree of control over it. Uh, it creates auxiliary textures that you can use and like map in there in like a lot of really interesting ways. Uh, you can swap out like a lot of modules, like the instruments themselves are created of networks of like approximately 30 to 40 modules. So it's a fairly advanced like modular architecture and you have a wide degree of control over it. So you can really go in and create your own stuff. Or if you're just like a VJ or a musician that wants something kind of basic, you can use presets, you can tag them and bring them up during a live performance in all kinds of ways. So that's the general idea of what the synth is doing. Uh, 
I think I probably covered most of the bases, but yeah, again, like the thing I really like about it is just the quality of the visual content. Uh, yeah, it's been in de development for a while. It's available now. Uh, you can get it directly from our website. The retail price is $1,200. And we're in the middle of actually trying to get it into storefronts worldwide. So you should be able to go into uh, most SIN stores, hopefully in the next, well, by the end of the year, and actually see it in person. So uh, again, uh, I'm Gene from Entropy and Sons, Knobcom 2024. Go to our websites, uh, entropyandsons.com, and you can learn more. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Can you show me like some more of the presets? Absolutely. Of the stuff it does? So let's actually get into here. Uh, or even uh, if you have it hooked up to an audio source or yes, something? Yes, I do have it hooked up to the audio source. It's a little quiet right now. But actually, let me turn off the audio gain so you can get actually my we may phone. Not, we may not hear it over the mics. My phone is actually being really quiet at the moment. So I have to use a gain control to kind of get a little more visible. But yeah, you can see like these patterns right here generated from frequency responses from the audio. Uh, yeah, so you, you can get a bunch of audio waveforms and statistics and stuff like that. Like you can get the average volume of the audio. You can get like the low frequency energy and you can use that to control like a color channel uh, or any kind of other thing like that. It can actually tell you when a beat hits like actively so you can actually make it respond exactly when a beat hits in like an audio track. Um, yeah, so let me just load a couple more patches because there's, like I said, it comes with uh, a wide variety of content uh, just out of the box. There are literally uh, 800 full presets. There are close to 1,000 like partial presets, which is a little bit complicated to explain, but yeah. And it does some really interesting interpolation. It doesn't just like A-B blend between patches. It does some like, really advanced network-based like merging, which you probably are not going to be able to find anywhere else. Yeah, it's got really responsive controls. It definitely is significantly more responsive than you would get with like Resolume and like a MIDI controller because you don't have computer latency. And all these buttons on here and uh, knobs are remappable. It's, it's really configurable. It has like a really uh, sophisticated and powerful like I/O sort of matrix configurator on board, where you can connect like a variety of input signals, like CV, MIDI, to a whole bunch of actions, where actions are like setting parameter values, toggling LFOs, uh, loading and saving, and randomizing presets or like parts of presets. You can really get in there and configure like a wide range of like control surfaces. Um, yeah, I'll just keep playing because I, I mean, yeah. I could do this forever. So you have to stop me at some point, but I will <laughs> definitely just keep going as long as you well, I, it's just are nice interested. To you know, see what it does. Yeah, no, I mean, I I think it looks great. Yeah, like what's it what's it actually doing now? So I mean, what's, what's it what's actually going? doing right now? Uh, that is a uh, kind of hard to explain. So this <laughs> instrument is a video feedback simulation with a bunch of mathematics in there. Uh, the math is sort of reminiscent of what you use to compute the Mandelbrot and Julia sets. So. Uh, it's not super advanced, but it's a little more advanced than like high school math. Um, but it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's a combination of a bunch of uh, mathematical transformations, uh, video feedback, and a bunch of color transformations. And it's also integrating audio frequency analysis with some of these kind of radial bands right there. Uh, it's very controllable. Uh, like I said, this instrument has about 40 uh, actual like modules, and you can swap out the modules. Uh, there's a big network of... Uh, actual signals you can kind of intercept and like do things with. Um, it's kind of difficult to describe what an individual patch is because it's largely just a correct collection of numbers and like specific like effects and things like that. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite right here. I, I don't know if I've showed you this one yet, but this is definitely among the coolest things that this one does, which is why it's the very first preset on the synth. And these buttons right now are just hooking, hooked up to LFOs. Uh, this is a zoom control by default. This is a width control. There's an opacity control right here. All these knobs are also buttons, so they give you some kind of auxiliary information there. Uh, there's some color controls. There's a shift button on here for uh, additional like pages of controls and for additional actions on the LCD. And there's a navigation button for actually navigating quickly around like the LCD UI because the LCD UI is actually like fairly advanced. There's something like 30 pages of like actual control here. There's like an I/O control configurator. There's a, a big settings page. So here's the preset selector. It comes with like multiple pages of presets. Uh, yeah, here, let me go back to the 
3D oscilloscope. This is an oscilloscope that's using uh, audio information to kind of create this like dynamic stuff. One of the effects on here is like a mixer, so you can actually mix in uh, other like visual buffers. So you can actually create like a fe uh, feedback loops and like connections through like the module network. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on right here. Uh, yeah, and it also has like this little performance URI right here, which is explicitly designed for live performance. It comes with a preview if you can't see the screen. Uh, it remaps all the controls automatically to be more suitable for like a live environment, so you can synchronize uh, the output with like ambient lights, and the buttons get remapped to controls for uh, audio and uh, external cameras. So it is definitely designed uh, from the ground up with like live performance in mind. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, easily usable at like a festival or like in the back of a club uh, by like a lighting person. It's uh, fairly straightforward to just like queue up some presets and then have some of these buttons uh, trigger and uh, a toggle between some of your presets on scene changes. So it, it's definitely designed uh, for live performance. Um, and yeah, you can go in here and you can configure how like all the CV is uh, kind of interfacing with things. It shows you what's actually coming in on your ports. Uh, again, there's 0 to 10 volts, uh, although uh, we do know that there are a lot of uh, different standards for your rack, so there, there are plenty of like con conversion modules that are helpful. But yeah, you can then go in and just like map a CV value to like a specific parameter and stuff like that. And, and you could definitely do the same thing with MIDI, uh, and the same thing with all the audio signals as well. So again, awesome. a very wide degree of configurability with the I.O. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, it does support four video channels at the same time, so you can actually use it as a multi-channel video mixer. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, I am actively developing a video effect processing instrument, which is explicitly going to make this usable as like just a video effects uh, setup. So it's definitely an, uh, one of the many kind of uh, developments and advancements and uh, post-release kind of updates that we have planned for the synth. Awesome. So, yeah. Thanks, man. Cool. Uh, my pleasure.